Hey everyone, it's El Marquez back again with our It's OK to Be News series. And once again, we're joined by our own Docker captain. I'm going to keep calling you that, just our Docker captain. That's fine with me. <laughs> and you've been kind enough to set up a demo to show us a little bit more about what we touched base on last week. And that's really what is the difference between our virtualized environments and VMs and our containerized environments? Yeah, and that, that's a great question because uh, it's it's one that takes a little while to understand. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen a little bit, and we're gonna we're gonna look at a, at a couple different things. So I'm gonna start off first with uh, let's I'm gonna start off with a picture here. And this is just from a Google slide here that I use on a couple of presentations. And, and so some of you have probably seen something very similar to this, uh, containers versus VMs. And so on the, on the left-hand side, we see there's underlying infrastructure so that the bare metal itself, there's a host OS, there's a hypervisor. Now, depending on what hypervisor you're using, those could be flipped. It can be one of the, the same or they're one component there or whatever. But in, in Traditionally, if we needed to isolate app one from app two because of dependency differences, whatever, the way we'd isolate those is by spinning up a whole another guest OS. And so that guest OS has a kernel, it has memory management, has a scheduler, has lots of other, other things to, to run that OS. And again, that's really just to support a single app, a single or a single app with its binaries and libraries. And so we we replicate that for as many different isolated environments that, that we need. Now, so what makes containers different is that instead of needing to, to spin up whole different guest OSs, we can now really just spin up additional processes on the machine, but namespace them away from each other. Now, so the, the kernel, the Linux kernel, has had the, the ability to do namespaces for actually quite a long time, but it's just been really hard to use and to set them up properly. And so what Docker did is they really made it easy to, to set them up. And so if, what we see here is I have app one and app one spins up and it's basically in its own little environment. You can almost think of it as like change root on steroids in which change root allows you to change the root for a process to a different part of the file system. But in addition to changing the root, we're also going to give it its own view of the process tree, its own view of network interfaces, its own view of users. Um, and, and there are several of these different namespaces, okay? And, and so all these processes, again, are just additional processes on the machine, but they can't see each other. They're all isolated from each other. And again, these are using primitives that have been in the Linux kernel for a long time. And so with the Docker daemon, I have that off to the right. That's just another process on the machine. And so when I run a container, that's hooking in with the kernel and setting up all those namespaces to run an isolated container, okay? So... I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to switch over to a terminal now because things are so much more fun in terminals. All right. What I have here in my split screen terminal, the, the top uh, terminal is my, my host machine and the bottom um, is going to be where I'm going to run the, the containers from. So I'm just going to do something. I'm going to do a container run. I'm going to add the remove flag so it'll clean things up once I'm done. And I'm going to run this in interactive mode and I'm just going to run Alpine. Uh, I should have said that my host that up top is the Docker for Mac VM. So you'll see a, every once in a while additional logging that, that's showing up here. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run sleep. And I'm going to sleep for 60 seconds, but throw it in the background. Okay. And if I do a PS on, from inside the container, it looks like that that sleep is process ID 7. Now, that sounds like a pretty low number. And it indeed is. But if I go on the host machine, and if I look at this, sleep really has process ID 59,450. Okay. And in fact, this bin, this bin shell, if we, I'm going to grab for that now, that process, now there, there's a couple others that Docker is using, is 59,398. But inside the container, it's only process ID 1. Okay. So I, I've run a container, and that container, at the end of the day, it's just another process on the machine. It's process ID 59,398. And the sleep as well is just another process on the machine. Now, let's, let's try something out here. If I, from the host, kill my sleep command, 59450, what would I expect inside the container? 
Well, I would expect that if I do a PS now, I shouldn't see that sleep, right? And that's indeed what I see. I see that I got killed. And so again, these, these are still processes on the same host. So that does mean that containers are sharing the kernel with all other containers, but they're given their own little isolated view. Okay. Same thing if I were to now run, let's, let's do something different. Let's do Nginx, for example. Okay, we'll see the log showing up up there. Um, and let me grab for Nginx. We see that the Nginx daemon is 59,621. Now I didn't run this in background mode, so I'm gonna restart real quick and I will add the D flag here to run detach, run it in the background. And I'm gonna exec into that container. Uh, so pro tip, if, in case those that are new, this ID here is the full ID for the container. If you want to do anything with uh, like exec into the container, you don't have to put the whole ID in. You can just do a partial match and it'll we'll figure it out. Um, so I'm going to basically drop into the container now. And from the host, if I again look for Nginx, I see that it's at 59.848. Of course, nice. PS isn't even there. Um, and we'll have to do this in the manual way here. Um, so let's see what process ID one is my Nginx, okay, the daemon off, which we're seeing here. So inside the container, it thinks it's process ID one, while on the host it's 59840. So again, that's just one example of the, the process uh, namespace in action. The same thing works for network interfaces. So inside the container, it can bind to port 80, and that's port 80 for that container for those network interfaces, which isn't the same as port 80 of the host machine. And that's why when I started up the container, I had to make that mapping so that I say port 80 from the host is gonna to go to port 80 of the container, and then Docker puts all the networking glue to, to make all that happen. And, and so you can do some pretty pretty cool stuff there. And again, so the, the, the differences between VMs and containers, VMs are spinning up a full guest OS, while containers really just spin up another, another process, that the file system for that process is coming from an image, and then all the additional namespaces are being applied to isolate that process away from other processes on the machine. Uh, so there's a little bit deeper dive. We could go more. Um, I could also talk about, so I'll, I'll just mention, so there are things called C groups, control groups, that allow us to limit the resource capabilities that a, a, a process has. And those, ag again, exist just in a, the Linux kernel. And we can apply C groups to containers to say, okay, this container only gets two CPU and 512 megs of RAM, for example. And so you can set controls to limit how much a, a container can access from the host. Thanks so much for that example. Sure. I actually didn't know the pro tip about being able to abbreviate the ID. Yeah. So. That'll help because I'm always trying to remember what crazy name was assigned to the container oh, yeah. and I'm like, Belevolent Monkey. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, with that, so many times I do a, a Docker container LS or whatever, and I just grab the first three letters because I can't remember more than that sometimes. <laughs> so it, it makes things so much faster. So if you guys have any more questions about the way that namespaces work within containers or even C groups, since we touched on those, Go ahead and put those below, and I'm sure that you'd be willing to come back and sure. expand on those. Sure. All right. So before I let you go, I have one last question. Um, I know that we started talking because I started a study group trying to get people to get certified as a Docker associate. And I was wondering if you might be willing to tell us, you know, really what benefit that has, what it means when you become a certified Docker associate. Sure. So what... And then this kind of falls in along with any certification. So with any certification, you've demonstrated expertise or, or knowledge in, in a certain subject. Um, and especially for a, a subject like Docker, um, with it as cutting edge and emerging as it is, it's, it's kind of separating you from others that may not have that certification. So if, if you're sitting down and you're trying to apply for a DevOps job or, or something of that sort, and you have the certification, it's immediately going to make you stand out a little bit from, from others. Um, because, and I'll say too, the, the Docker Certified Associate exam isn't really 
one that you can just kind of sit down, read the book, go take the exam. It, there's a lot of kind of practical questions related with it too. So you, it, it shows that you've actually spent some time with Docker and understand how it's working, not that you've read the manual. And, uh, and so that, that helps it stand out quite a bit. I think I like that answer because I don't like when someone's new, that's the first advice that we give them, yeah. right? Just go read the manual and figure it out. Yeah. So I think what you're saying is this test really puts someone in the driver's seat to see if they've been able to hands-on use Docker. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's all the time that we have for today. But if you have any other questions, feel free to put them below and we'll definitely touch base again. Thanks again for doing this for us. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, go ahead and close this out. And remember, it's okay to be new.